Ladies and gentlemen, I've been playing chess for nearly 20 years of my life, and yes, I'm 26 years old. It's been that long, and let me tell you, from the bottom of my heart, I truly believe that the most fun level of the game of chess is somewhere around a thousand. And today, we're not at around the thousand level, but I'll be showing you an absolutely wonderful, a delightful battle between two 800 rated players. Now, this game is actually kind of unique because one of the players is a former student of mine. They're actually young. This was a this was an over the board game. This is not an online game, uh, and uh, I mean it still provides us plenty of content. But you might not see the usual, you know, angry Gotham. But we are all going to have a bit of a chuckle together because chess is just such a brutal, brutal game, and we're kind of all in this together. Now uh, the players are uh, dolphins and elephants as profile photos because uh, those are two of the smartest animals that exist. And also I didn't know what else to put, so it's a dolphin versus a uh, an elephant. So, the game begins with e4, as always, the eval bar is right there. Let us jump into the action. Uh, black begins with d5. Um, so, the Scandinavian defense, or potentially uh, e takes d5 and, uh, and, and knight f6. So, trying to recapture in the center uh, with the knight. Now, you, if you have my Gotham Gambit's repertoire with black, this is actually what I recommend in that repertoire, but actually the, my, my former student who's currently being coached by a good friend of mine is actually playing with the white pieces. So the scrappy 750 playing some crazy stuff here. Uh, in general, when you don't know what to do in an opening, it's good to just develop to the center of the board. So this is great. Everything is wonderful so far. Now here black plays the first confusing move of the opening, which is knight back to f6. I don't really know why black decided to voluntarily retreat for no reason. Uh, when in doubt, you should just develop all the other pieces. Uh, you don't really need to go backwards. So I like what white is doing here. Good development so far. Uh, and now we have knight c6. And here, uh, white should just take the center with the, with the pawn uh, and castle. I mean, white does not have to do anything too crazy, but, uh, you know, white plays knight g5. And that, that move makes sense. It's not the best move, but it makes sense because you see that you can go for this and this, and logically, if black plays e6 blocking in this bishop, then you feel like you've actually won a little bit of a moral victory. Uh, but here, uh, black plays the move uh, bishop e6, which is just, it's a terrible move. It's just not a good move at all, uh, because there's two attackers on that square. So black said, rather than block my bishop in, I'm just going to kill it. It just deserves to die a very painful death. Bishop 2e6 is just no good. And now the question is, what should white take with? What does white want to preserve? It's kind of interchangeable. It's very tough to tell. Uh, I would probably want my knight to end up on that square afterward, uh, and the player agrees with me. So, okay, kind of interesting. Um, now, you're attacking the queen, so the queen will probably come up here, and the best move here by white is to keep the knight there. That's very hard to do. Just playing a defensive move, making sure that the knight just is a nuisance. Do not take on f8. That is a horrible decision because that bishop sucks and this knight is priceless. And because this knight is so good, white chooses to back up and preserve it. The problem is that now, even though white is up a pawn, the second that white goes backwards and black gets an opportunity to consolidate their position by castling, black is going to take over the initiative. So we're not in the blunder land yet. We will get a one-way ticket there very soon. But this is this is considered a massive mistake by the engine because the engine sees that you can play something like Queen E2 and black is in severe trouble because black just can't castle. And if black plays something like knight d8 trying to trade knights, you okay, at that point you can take and black will lose the right to castle probably or take with the queen and allow this check on the king and the pawn. So you, just keeping this skill of like keeping a piece in a territory defended as a nuisance to the rest of the army is really tough to do at the 800 level. So white backs up, black castles, and uh, now white should probably castle, but plays d3. And now black actually totally seizes the initiative in beautiful style with e5. I mean, taking uh, the knight uh, for, you know, for a spin here and uh, attacking in the center of the board. And on the very next move, developing this bishop to c5. Uh, yeah, so bl black is completely fine as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, black has a great position now. Uh, now white really should like castle. Um, if white waits any longer to not finish their development, they're just going to run into problems. Um, yeah, and so bishop g5, and now white is losing. And I mean, it's it's actually really hard to understand why exactly white is losing. Well, if you look around at your position, right, you always need to worry about that weak square near your king, which is f2. 
Uh, and uh, this bishop is loose. Like, there's no actual threat here. So queen f5 here just is, like, really strong for black. Uh, because you attack this and this. And uh, if the bishop backs up to h4 to defend, black just launches a pawn attack and is winning. Of course, black can also expedite this and play bishop takes f2. King f2 and queen f5, which is... Uh, an equally brutal version of what I've just shown you, and black will just be winning back the bishop. So you always need to look at the weak square near your king, right? Uh, so bishop g5 is played, uh, and black is winning. Instead, black uh, just gets scared for no reason, moves the rook out of the pin, and allows now white to take over the advantage. Uh, yeah, so bishop takes f2 is a very good move there. Uh, now white is just fine, because white again should castle or play knight g3 to fight for the light squares with this other knight. So what does white do? Plays queen d2. Not a terrible move, it seems that white is trying to castle queenside. The problem is white should 100% be castling kingside, but maybe white was like, well they castled queenside, so I should castle queenside, because, you know, if they did it, I should do it, that seems pretty smart. And also this bishop is staring here, which is scary, but it's not scary. You just convince yourself it's scary. In fact, castling away and losing that pawn is far scarier. So at this point, we have kind of the most tense moment of the game. What do the sides do? We're about 13 moves into the game. Both sides are about to be castled. Both sides have gotten their pieces developed. Now it's about making that next step forward into your opponent's position, whether by piece or by pawn. So black plays knight d4. That's just a natural looking move. You just come forward. You don't even think twice. Of course, white should not take because you would just open up the floodgates to your king. So white castles long, which seems to be the plan all along. Black here uh, should, this is a, I mean, this is the top engine suggestion is to play bishop b4 to just pressure white, like just have this pin here. Very tough to do. These very short moves are like blind spots for, for beginners, like just sliding the bishop forward one square, or for example, like sliding the queen forward like one square. I don't know. It's just not very easy to do unless there's an obvious threat. So black plays a move that actually does make a lot of sense. Knight to g4, uh, attacking f2, which is now very weak. I mean, it just, it... And, and keeping the tension here between the knights, not taking, allowing, you know, you to get taken. Knight g4 is a great move. The engine hates it because the engine now sees a way for white to improve their position, uh, attacking the bishop and playing defense at the same time. There is a 0% chance that that ever happens. Uh, you are far more likely to get a move like rook f1 or just taking because because you can and because I guess the queen protects the pawn which is what happens we have knight takes d4 not a bad move as long as you then put your knight in the center with e4 so ed4 knight e4 and I mean white is good white has consolidated the position the next move is going to be kicking this knight out but now 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 from this point forward ladies and gentlemen if you had the patience to watch about eight minutes into this video you're about to witness just absolute and utter chaos and it's going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen so queen to d5 First thing you do when this queen comes here, is there a threat? Not really, but is there a threat? Yes, absolutely. Queen takes a2 is a massive threat. And the queen is kind of like a lighthouse, right? You need to like always look around. The other thing is, even if you play king b1, there's going to be moments where moves like rook e4 are possible to remove the guard of this bishop. Uh, you're lucky because right now your queen is defending. But just keep in mind that just because you have a defender of a piece, it's not always going to be that easy, right? They're going to take and take it, and as long as this queen isn't defending, black is going to win two pieces. So you have to see this kind of coordination with all the pieces, but this is the most important thing right now. And I've probably introduced this position long enough that you understand that that move absolutely does not get seen, and instead white plays the move h3. And like I said, I mean, you want to play h3, absolutely. You definitely want to play h3, uh, but you don't want to play it in this position um, because now black plays queen takes a2, and this is the concept of danger levels. So right now, there is no direct threat, but there is. I mean, it's not a check, but... So the danger levels of, like, the gap of one move. Queen takes a2 has been missed, and the knight cannot be taken due to checkmate. Now, here the machine says that you should move your c-pawn in order to get a getaway square for your king. Always remember that. It's not just the pieces that have to make way for the king. It's also the pawns that can make some space for the king. Uh, so you should play c3. Um, and then if pawn takes, you can take with the queen and kind of run up. The problem is white plays queen e2 and now the game is completely lost. And, you know, this is one of the reasons I wanted to feature this game because as completely insane as the eval bar is about to go for the duration of this game, a lot of these moves look very natural and are not that simple to just refute. But the engine will be like, oh, blunder! So why is queen e2 losing? Queen e2 is losing because um, even though your king gets here, it never gets here. 
What I mean by that is here there is, uh, there is this. Queen a1 check, king d2, bishop b4, and you're just squeezed in. So you play c3, but when you play c3, my queen arrives on the b2 square either now or after we do this. And I mean, you're just getting, you're just getting blasted. Like, you have no escape. If you take, what happens is I check you and then I win your queen. So the problem is that you ended up putting your queen on the same file as the enemy rook, which, which is just going to take you at some convenient moment. But black has to see all that. That's not easy to see. And if queen b2, maybe this king runs away. And I mean, maybe the game goes on and maybe two moves later, black hangs the knight because it's just hanging, right? So black is just leaving the knight to hang to attack the king. It's not so easy. Um, and actually black, instead of checking, decides to play knight to e5 in this position, which allows white a massive resurgence back into this game. But white has to move the c-pawn so they can play king c2. This is not the way you're supposed to be running at all. So what does white do? White plays knight takes bishop, which looks like a free bishop. I mean, why wouldn't you do that, right? That, it just looks like a free bishop. However, it's not. Because in this position, there is queen to a1 check. And after king to d2, you can play knight c4 and win the rook. I mean, sorry, win the queen and give away your rook for it. But the, but the combination is actually pretty insane. It's knight c4 check, dc4, and rather than taking, you throw in this check first. Because that way you're going to win the queen and the knight or the bishop. If you just take the queen, then you're not getting enough material. You see, there is no check now. And I can just defend this knight. I don't know how. Probably like, oh, I wouldn't defend the knight, but I would move it and defend the bishop. Um, but you, you need these in-between moves. You need the in-between moves. And if after knight takes c5, you don't see queen a1, knight c4, but you always should be looking for checks. Always look for checks. Always. Always look for checks. In this position, black plays knight c4. Knight c4 looks absolutely genius. It looks absolutely genius because the queen is hanging and mate is threatened. I mean, black is... That, that actually... That, that really looks like a genius move. Admittedly, knight to c4. Um, if you take, you lose the queen for nothing. So what's worth more than a queen and a threat to your king? An immediate counterattack on your opponent. Queen g4 check, beautiful. <coughs> and now pawn takes knight. And now white is up two pieces for a moment. It, it's not going to be, if black sees this, it's not going to go. So queen a1 check, king d2. And now probably the best move according to the engine is going back and winning the knight because it's a fork. But we're not going to do that. Black probably still thinks they're winning. I mean, this king is stuck in the center of the board. And even though white has a massive material advantage, it's very easy to blunder the game away. Very easy. Um, you know, the computer is saying to go knight a6 check to open up this b line. You know, that's not easy to do when you're worried about your own king. So what does white do? Queen back to f3 and almost the entire advantage is gone. Queen b4 check now picks up the knight and threatens the bishop. And uh, what does black do? Queen b4 check. Now, king c1 is the best move. You should just run your king because there's no more checks after that. Your queen actually covers everything. But here, white says, rather than walk my king, nah, let's move the c-pawn now. And hangs, mate, this is so hard to visualize because obviously if the queen is going back there, you think that they're going to like ignore this pawn or take and take this. But now the queen can come back to b2 and the game is over because king d3 only move, queen c3 is mate. You can go from being plus 12 to plus 2 to maiden 2 for the opponent. <coughs> the hardest thing to do in chess is to see reverse moves. Like a move that just goes all the way back. All the way back to where it came from. Now, what does black do? Takes the knight. Obviously takes the knight. And still is doing okay. Because even though moving the c-pawns was good a while ago, it's bad now. It's bad now because the king has no more cover. Back then the king had cover. Now the king has no cover. So, what does white do? Bishop back to f4. Not a bad move. I really don't hate it, moving the, the, queen, uh, the bishop out of the way. The problem is that, again, now that you've moved your c-pawns, you're about to lose all of them. So your king is just going to have absolutely no shelter whatsoever. But black has to play queen c4. Okay, black plays queen c4. White is still up a pawn of material. It's bishop for two pawns, but this position looks absolutely terrifying. And the problem is you have no good moves because now black is also threatening takes, takes, and take the bishop, which I don't know if they see that. So what does white do? Rookie one. 
virtually losing the game again. Now, d takes c3 is absolutely the best move because of queen c3, queen f4. But the rooks face each other, so what is black going to do? Of course, you shouldn't take the rook. Queen a2 check. Okay, a slightly incorrect check, but a check all the same. What does white do? The best move is actually king d3, but it's far more human to play king c1. White plays king d3, the best move. Kind of like walking into the middle of the board. And now the computer wants a draw. It wants queen a6, king d2, and queen back to a2. That's never going to happen. D takes c3 now. And now white is better if and only if white plays rook to a1, which is completely unfindable from the human standpoint. That is up for, for this level. For GM, maybe, because you play rook a1, and the, the, the key about rook a1, there's no checks for black for, with the queen. There is rook d8. But then you can actually take the pawn and be safe. The hardest thing about this is finding where you can get your king safely. So king takes c3 loses the game again. It loses the game again because um, now there is the backwards check on the diagonal winning this rook. So for example, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, queen a5 check, or queen a5 check, and then rook takes rook. There is a difference, but for this level there is really no difference. Um, yeah, there is queen a5 check, just winning the rook in one move on the same diagonal. Always watch these diagonal checks. That is the major difference between where you're checking the king. But we have rook to d8, and now white is winning. White is winning if, and only if, white finds bishop takes c7 check, which is obviously never going to happen. The point of bishop takes c7 is that if the king takes on c7, now the king is on the seventh rank, and the rook goes to do the damage. That is really hard to see in a game. That is actually one of the reasons why you do tactics, to find moments like this in games. But in games, no one tells you there's a tactic, right? So you have to look at the most forcing moves, and the most forcing move, one of the most forcing moves, is to force the king out and then laser beam it on the seventh rank. Very hard to see, understandable it was missed, queen g3, and now it's back to a draw because even though there is this, the rook has been moved and the rook is not hanging. So, queen a3 check, king to c... Why are we going forward? Just go back. White had to go forward once. White did not have to go forward the rest of the game. King to c4. And now it's over because queen a4 and the same way to lose the rook. The same way. The same kind of diagonal concept of losing the rook. Queen a4 check just wins. But black goes all the way back to a6. White needs to run the king all the way back. King c3. It's a draw. It's a draw. But now, oh my gosh, rook takes d1. Why rook takes d1? No, because now after rook takes d1, you can't fork me. I mean, I'm, I'm fine and your rook is still very passive. But now white decides to get fancy and takes on c7. Now white takes on c7 because a couple of moves ago they did this. But folks, I, have, I, I just want to tell you something. When a bishop goes far like this, it's, it's actually a liability because all the king has to do is move. And by the way, it was probably better to go to c8, but whatever. All it has to do is move, and now the bishop's not doing anything. That's the problem with the bishop. If you send it all the way in, it needs an extra move to come back, and white doesn't have that extra move right now. So rook takes d1, queen a3 check, and the game is just a draw, but obviously it's, it's not a draw. Okay, so king to d2, right? King to d2, bravery. White is trying to escape this way. Queen a2, and now is losing because the queen had to stay close. The queen had to stay close. Okay, queen a2, king e1. Now we're running away. Here comes rook e8 check. Now, you absolutely have to block this check. You have to block this check. But white's game plan was to run the king, right? So naturally, white is going to keep running the king and lose the game again to queen e2 and taking of the rook. Queen e2 gets in the king's face and wins the rook, and black doesn't see it, instead opting to go backwards and allowing the king to complete its journey to the complete opposite side of the board where it probably should have castled many, many moons ago. Now black is like, crap, I'm out of checks, so I'm just going to slide my queen over one square. What does white do? White should bring this bishop back, put it on a square, it can never be taken, pick up a few pawns, trade rooks, and either deliver a mate or promote a pawn. That is how white is going to win this game. I don't hate it. All right, we trade the rooks immediately. I don't hate it. Now, all you have to do is not blunder a faraway check with your king and your bishop. Queen a4, black is going to set that up. White blunders it immediately. Queen to d1 check now wins the bishop, and it's a it's just a pandemonium of an endgame. Black doesn't see it. Black thinks that they're getting mated, so they decide to go like this. Good move here is bishop b6, completely covering any sort of escape, or bishop c7, trying to glue the king in with the queen and the bishop. Uh, white does this first. I don't hate it. King runs out. Queen c5 check. b6! b6! 
b6 and it must be over it must be over right because bishop takes b6 queen c7 queen a7 now white could have done this in a, in a few ways bishop c7 was also good black here is already in serious trouble because they didn't take their opportunity so b6 played and now do we have bishop b6 sometimes it's better to take with the piece that's worth less because you can coordinate them yes and now we're in the clear queen c7 and queen a7 and white the galaxy brain 880 survives a brutal brutal king attack walks their king to the opposite side of the board in a sign of true bravery and despite 11 blunders by white according to the engine and eight of them for the black pieces a combined 36 either inaccuracies or mistakes according to the brutal chess.com review white wins